Hi, okay, so we're on to the third book of this series that I'm still so excited for. This time we're doing a reread. We are reading the book Solo by Kwame Alexander. Um, it's pretty late right now, so I'm not gonna film any more right now about the book. Um, but I've read actually a lot of it since it's in verse, um, and I've read it before. I'm more than halfway through the book already. We had a three-hour plane ride, so I read a lot of a lot of it during that. So yeah, I will be discussing this more tomorrow on the 20th of September. So that's the plan. Um. Hi, um, so today we'll be discussing Solo by Kwame Alexander. I finished this book really quickly, only in two days. I have a lot of notes that I made, uh, not notes, but like parts that I like that I bookmarked. Look at all those. So I'll be discussing those majorly in this video. I am... Psyched. So... We're gonna get started. Oh, let me give you a bit of background. So, um, about me, my history with this book, because we have some history. Um, I originally got this book in the summer, I wanna say, of 2019 or 18, um, because I read for summer reading and then I got three autographed books. Um, so that was really cool. One of them was this. So, here is Kwame Alexander's signature um this is the advanced readers copy so this is the copy even before the real book was out for the general public this is advanced readers copy not for sale so yeah that's really cool this is the only advanced readers copy i have of a book um and yeah i have not i've yet to read the actual final book so i'm wondering like how much it'll be changed if any at all um i think i know like the dedication isn't in here but that may be it we're gonna get started um yeah okay no let's not I, this was my third time reading this book the first time that i got it mommy actually thought it was too inappropriate for me um so i read it anyway and what i did was i basically just read it at school and then as soon as i got home from school i just returned it to the place that she hid it and the second time was i think like the year after again i don't think i had permission so i just took it and then i returned it but um yeah at that time i don't think she even remembered where it was um and then for my 14th birthday i want to say i asked if i could read it and she finally said yes um it talks about a character named blade morrison the main character is named blade morrison who lives in hollywood california and he has a famous dad he's a musician his dad is a musician and yeah, he just like, he's an alcoholic, and yeah, um, so they don't have the best relationship. Um, and then he ends up finding out that he's adopted, so then he goes to Ghana, Africa, to f try to find his biological mother. This is the only book I have read that takes place in Ghana, where my family comes from, which is pretty cool. Kwame Alexander is Ghanaian himself, so that is why he incorporated that aspect of it, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. So we're going to get started. The first bookmark I have is on page 8. The, like, phrase when it says, I'm afraid to open my eyes and face the world that awaits the fractal world that used to make sense, but now seems as torn as the possibility that float by, like, a thousand puzzle pieces that just don't fit together anymore. Very lyrical. The authors have this thing. Where they basically include song titles in this book and some of the chapter names are the song titles so i have a lot of songs to listen to they also include like the credits so it says the rockers what album it's part of what record dates the recording date the studio and where it was it's on 99 
the only reason why I bookmarked this play page is because it's the chapter is called When Doves Cry, and When Doves Cry is actually it's a song, um, and I only know that because it's also a title of the Degrassi the Next Generation episode. I believe it's season two, potentially the first episode of season two. Um, I love Degrassi. I'm a Degrassi stan, so of course I noticed that. Um, I'm not sure the relevance of that song to this chapter. It's pretty short. Um, 93 again. If you want to read it, I don't want to read it right now, so I'm not going to. Next is 139 called Taking a Stand. I thought this was just kind of funny. Um, so basically, his girlfriend's father does not really approve of him. Okay, so it just says this. It's called Taking a Stand. Sir, I've been underwater my entire life. Your daughter pulls me up, gives me new breath. Strange and familiar, this is, this is all I know now. This is where I want to be, between the moon and her gaze, inside her arms, carefully inhaling tomorrow, is what I want to say. What I actually say is, SIR, I LOVE YOUR DAUGHTER! <laughs> it's in all caps, SIR, I LOVE YOUR DAUGHTER. Um, oh, I was gonna try to start homework at 4.30, it's 4.29. Not gonna happen, Kyber. 202. Okay, leaving LA. I won't miss the Hollywood Hills, the palm trees, the fake city and its manufacturing lights. I won't miss the bloodsuckers, those paparazzi, the tabloid news. Shame because of my name, or even those sunsets over Santa Monica, Santa Monica Pier. I won't miss this pain that will never leave. I won't miss the music under the trees or the feeling of finding my own safe place to breathe. And now, I won't miss her. This sounds pretty good too. Now this is just describing the village that he goes to called Konko in Ghana. Konko is bustling on 236. Konko is bustling and bursting with children chasing goats in soccer balls. While their mothers cook, wash, laugh, and dance all at the same time to what sounds like James Brown, only faster, with heavy drums and lots of chants. The energy here is familiar, jovial even. It rivals Hollywood Boulevard, only less glitz, more raw and real. The men are off cutting timber, growing cocoa, farming all day for their families. Each person I pass waves like they know me or they want to. It's a good, it is a good feeling not to be recognized and still noticed. I like that last sentence especially. I feel like sometimes we forget to even acknowledge people that we don't know. Um, and yeah, I went to Ghana a few years back, I think it was 2019, and yeah, people are pretty nice there. 2.52, it's called This Morning. Last night, after missing the gentle strum of my guitar that always helps me file my slumber and finally passing out from the boiling key, and then waking up at 3 a.m. and thinking of all the things I'm going to say to my mother and then falling back asleep at 6.30 a.m., I wake to the sound of chopping timber, the crying of babies, the thumping dozens of bare feet cooking, kicking a ball outside, and a little girl with a whopping smile, smacking her teeth and winking at me over and over again. See, uh, that's how C is introduced. Yeah. Yeah. This is kind of depressing. It's called Why I Don't Play Music Anymore. 269. It's what happens when the sweetness of life turns sour and putrid. The innocence, faith, and trust melts away, evaporating the good old days into a void. I remember not so long ago when I could make a girl fall for me by just playing the strings, when I could get people to sing and dance around me in ripples and waves. But the music died inside me the day I found my life, my love, was a lie. Okay. The strings became arrows in my side, killing me softly, swiftly. My life no longer sim simple and sweet like American Pie. My guitar, my love songs, my music had to die. That's why. Yeah, almost kind of done. I'm gonna keep this bookmark because it's a song recommendation that I really want to listen to. Okay, track nine, it's only love, live. Mom always said it's only love, oh, on 316 and 317. Mom always said it's only love is the greatest rock duet of all time, and if aliens ever landed, it would be the song she'd play to greet them. Why, well, asked her, because of the energy, the passion, and it gets you through the hard times, sad times, mad times. Doesn't matter if someone disappoints you, if they hurt you, it's near the end of the universe. Remember that blade, it's only love, she'd say, and give me a bear hug and butterfly kisses, but don't forget, she does reminded me, love is everything to. This is just one sentence I like. <laughs> yes, love. Love is complicated all around. Twisted humanness, flaws and scars so deep it could take an excavator to dig out the meaning of it all. I'll keep that bookmarked. Very profound. Nice job. On 336, or sorry, 337, excuse me. 
just says, um, why do we need mirrors when we can see the reflection of our goodness in the way others react to us? Okay, we're almost done. 402 just says, Revelation, we are the sum of moving parts and adjustable hearts. And I'm going to keep that bookmarked. Okay, next we have on 407, it's called The Peak. Ever been at the peak of a grand mountain where you can touch the clouds, feel them moving through you, bending sprightly toward the horizon, and you were overcome, unbound, and nearly engulfed? This is how I feel when I see you. And read the book so I understand that a little more. There are a lot of similes and metaphors in here. 423, okay. this is not the beginning of a new chapter, but it starts with... Um, this page arch with at the top of the mountain across the rainforest in the middle of the bush It seems I've figured out the dream and discovered that what I've been searching for has been inside of me this whole time Self-reflection we love that and one more This is on page oh 431 and 432 we did not know how serious it was she answered between sobs. It's malaria. How can you not know he continued Daddy, don't need to scream at her. She's scared too. We all are. What are they doing for her? He says, somewhat coolly. We are treating the malaria with medication, the nurses said. This lethal word is like an arrow aimed at chest, cutting through skin and bone, piercing heart and soul. I kind of only wanted to read that last paragraph, and then I kind of forgot. Well, it's not really a paragraph. It's more like a sentence, but I really want to read only that sentence for this excerpt, and then I just read the whole entire page because I forgot, but that's okay. Let's move on. And the next one is 432, called The Mosquito. The mosquito is an invisible murderer, piercing possibility, stu sucking features with its six-sorted proboscis. It knows just where to bite, where vessels to attack, which vessels to attack, and it shows no mercy and won't even spare the children. And that's it. Nope. Okay, we have one more. <sighs> Okay, 449, the worst weapon unleashed on a person are the words, those unforgiving words, heavy with loss. And that's it. Um, I, yeah, so I need to do my homework. I was supposed to start at 4.30. It's now 4.54. I haven't even edited in a very long while, like more than a week, I feel like, which is really, really big for me. Um, that's it. So that was good. Third time's the charm. It was good. I was gonna say this was probably one of the books I've read the most. Like three isn't that much, but I don't really read that many books a lot of times. So maybe, I don't know. Um, the only other potential I'm thinking of, I've read Swing, I think three times as well. Um, and then like the Land of Story series, I think I've only read those twice. So yeah. Maybe there's just something about Kwame Alexander that makes me want to read. Oh, Children of Bone Bone. I've read that twice, I believe. Because I've literally been reading it since summer. Um, yeah, and summer literally ended on August 30th. Um, and it's September 27th today. Um, so it was good. It was good. Good reading. Um, the next book in this series is called Darius the Great is Not Okay. I'm not sure how to pronounce the author's last name. I know it's like Abid. That's the first name. And then I'm actually not sure what the last name is. Like Corinne or something? Adib uh, Corum. Corum? I don't know. But yeah, I've already started it. I'm not that far, but I'm probably not finishing this um, in a week because I started it on Wednesday and it is Monday and I'm not even a fourth through it. But yeah, it's pretty good. I've been taking notes from my phone, which I'll probably transfer over to my spiral bound notebook. Um, maybe a little later today or sometime. It's a Nomad nominee this year. So that's the main reason why I'm reading this. I've been filming for eight minutes. Wow. Okay. Okay, thank you. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.